And we'll go through the small forwards at the Pies, which may have a domino effect or a domino conversation. First of all, you speak to anybody at Fremantle, and you say, who was pivotal to your play? And this man's name comes out, as does Swikowski. Now, they're not big name, you know, household names, but they play their role every single week, and they are absolutely pivotal for team success. Then it flows into, well, where does that fit into Collingwood? Do they need it? I don't think they're desperate for this style of player, but it's nice to have more than not have him at all. So I think it's a good pickup. There will be some dominoes that will have to move, I think, down the pecking order in regards to the Pies. But just on this piece alone, well done to the Pies. You bring in another quality player. They proved this year, though, Kingy, that chaos and smalls work, don't they? Yeah, and I think we've seen that across the competition. I mean, how many key forwards really took hold of a final this year? It was the smalls that yep. did the work, really. Uh, I think this is a bargain. I think it's an absolute bargain. Pick 34, speculative pick. First round of next year, who knows what that could be. That could be... Oh, the Pies are hoping it's pick 18 or 19 again. And not many of us would have them outside of the top four sitting here right now. So if he costs you a pick 15 to 20-odd next year, that's a bargain for me. I think this guy plays for seven, eight, nine years at Collingwood. That's what that sort of pick is worth. He's an impact player. He's a standard setter. He forces others to chase, tackle, harass for 120 minutes. Yet those players are so hard to find. We see them at the end of their journey mm. and reward them at the end of their journey, but you don't have many come in as a plug-and-play option. I think this is a steal for Collingwood. I think they should be absolutely thrilled with what they've achieved, and it forces the competition now to get better chasing what is already the best. And you think Bobby Hill comes in last year and plays a role, now ordering his coffees uh, with Norm, the name, just because of Norm <laughs> Smith. But the impact he comes in, Jamie Elliott, you've got Ginevan there, so, I mean, that is chaos. That's, that's how the modern game is, and Fly has made it work up in the front half. So here's the question. Can he play alongside, as in with, or does it need to be three of a possible four with McCreary, Jack Inovan and Bobby Hill? I'm not sure how that dynamic works. You know, we've clearly got my checker, I think. He's a mainstay. Jamie Elliott's an absolute star. So Schultz has played 90 games and kicked 101 goals. So let's say it's just over. Well, it is just over a goal a game. But so does McCreary. So does Ginnivan and so does Bobby Hill for their career. So it's not like they're desperate for that player that's able to come in and hit the score but also put pressure on it. They've got those players already. So I'll be intrigued about the order and how many of them play at any particular time because I don't think you can play all four. And Ralph, it's not just one position, though. I mean, you've got, I think McCreary can be a gun midfielder. So he'll get opportunity further up the field. You've got Elliot, who's 31 years of age, so he's not going to be there. I've got him outside of the smalls. I'll put Elliot as a hybrid sort of style. Yeah, but you've got to to look at the next phase of Collingwood as well. You can't just look for just next year alone. I think this is... This is just a terrific asset that you can now use anyway. He'll get more opportunity as a centre bounce starting mid player, I think, at Collingwood than he did at Fremantle. Go in like a Papley does and be that spark forward and drift forward in that, that Dustin Martin, Shea Bolton role. Um, I think it's a great selection, a great pick up, and, and well done for swooping. They, they came hard yep. and they got the job done. That, <laughs> that's did. what you want from your football club. Spot on. Ralphie, you've just put up on the website. What does that mean for Collingwood? What's the article? Well, I think the big question for me out of this entire trade period is has anyone bridged the gap on Collingwood? Now, they bring in Schultz. They've also got so many young players like Ash Johnson and Isaac Quainer and Bobby Hill who will still have that upside. So I think with the exception of Sydney, the answer is no of the, out of those real pre- Premiership rivals. So they kick 12-18. They lose Dan McStay before the grand final. They can't select what well, Nathan Murphy's done by quarter time. They still find a way in this grand final. So who has made a meaningful improvement of their rivals? Geelong won last year and Brisbane go, OK. Dunkley, Gunston and Will Ashcroft. The Dogs paid a million bucks for Liam Jones and Rory Lobb. Free I get Luke Jackson. So this year, so Richmond's done nothing. St Kilda's tinkered at the edges. Dow and Liam Henry. Carlton and GWS have done nothing. Adelaide and Fremantle will lose players. Melbourne lose Grundy. Clayton Oliver's public issues emerge. It guarantees nothing for Collingwood. But if you're Craig McRae, which club has just done so many extraordinary things that you're sitting back quaking in your boots thinking, we have to get so much better? Uh, A disappointment for me. Really? I think you overvalue... The fact that they've won the grand final, terrific. They won final series by seven points, one point and four points. There is no major gap. The gaps are so small. Mm. So there's many ways you can improve. Those clubs you just mentioned, so I think there's really seven or eight teams that are there to win it, recruiting for the now. But there's also the, the, the assets they've already got on their list that might be 21, 22, 23, that have got scope to improve. Um, there's some that were missing at the end of the year. Ashcroft was missing for Brisbane. You know, they, 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 had, they had pain out of the team at the end of the season you know, when it really mattered most. So I, I think there's, there's alibis for clubs that didn't win it. Yep. Uh, and they've got to find a way to improve, Del, and there's many ways to do that. My first would, piece would be, I've got no issue with Brisbane not doing a thing. You know, they lose a grand final by four points. Devastating. But I've got no issue with Chris Fagan and the whole club saying, hey, 
let's just tidy this up. Let's kick one more goal for the game and we're having a different conversation. So I think they're just backing in what they've currently got with some internal growth from those younger players. And Ralphie, when Lockie announced that he wanted to come to Collingwood, everyone turned their attention to Jack Ginevan and said, what does that mean for Jack? So Jack, he's absolutely determined to stay and I think this is fantastic. You know, in an era now with these young, what are they, millennials, Gen Z, you know, <laughs> if it gets a little bit hard, they're trying just to chuck them all in. Decide to move on. Anyone that's younger than 44, which is how old I am, you're all stuffed. So um, he's a premiership player, he's 20, he's got a lot to learn, but he's really keen to do it at the pies. I love the attitude. I suppose the only question I would ask of you guys, is there anything he can do to refine himself? So he uh, tackles 1.2 a game. Uh, can he be an elite tackler? Um, his coach is cranky on him, still over the Mooney Valley shenanigans. That's neither here nor there. Um, so McCreary's always going to play ahead of him because he tackles. Bobby Hill's the new cult hero. Yep. Jamie Elliott's the old cult hero. Will Hoskin Elliott can play multiple positions. Is there anything he can do to just make sure he's in that side next year's grand final? Well, getting back to your point, McCreary can go to the midfield. Flo McCray reckons he's one of the best runners, Kingy. So can he push up as that midfield role? I, I, I'm a Jack kind of a fan. Yep. And, and I think you're always learning in footy and some, some guys take a long while to learn who they are as a footballer, what they can be, what motivates them, you know, how to learn, how to live, um, both in-game and, and out of hours. And he's on that path. I mean, very rarely do you have a guy come in at his, his age last year and kick 40 goals in a season. They are hard to find. Mm. Everyone says, oh, we've got this bloke now, we've got the new model, let's throw that one out. It's not how it works. It's not out. It's a family environment. You bring him in, you challenge him. Hey, last year you come back as far as a house yep. from pre-season and it cost you six weeks of footy. Don't let that happen to you again. Bang. He'll put on his, his list this year of off-season goals to come back, to run PBs, to challenge those others around the edges for that same position. So I don't see it as a bad thing. I don't know why we have to purge this guy because one other person's coming in. Ralphie, we're talking about Collingwood nailing the trade period so far with 48 hours to go. The free men are clearing their decks at the moment because Liam Henry now is a saint. That's right. And so a uh, second rounder is about right. And now he is a uh, elite runner. He's an elite at racking up the ball. So far, he hasn't proved himself to be an elite kick, but he is a former top 10 selection, and that's what Securita wants to get in. It hasn't been the big names, it hasn't been the absolute superstars that they yeah. had to get multiple um, first rounders in for, but if you're looking for low investment, high upside, I think this very much fits the bill. He had a breakout year, and we've seen the style of St Kilda under Ross Lyon. If you can't run, you can't play, and this man fits that bill to start with. So you look at his breakout year. Previous to this season, he had a high of 17 disposals in his first 27 games. This year, he beat that by uh, 11 times. He had more than 17 disposals. So he played more through the midfield, that running style that we saw with the Dockers, him on the outside edge or coming off the half-back line. Fits right into the style of football that we've seen from the Saints. You place him on the opposite wing to Brad Hill. And you've got two elite runners that are prepared to do it all day, offensively and defensively. I think it's a great pick-out for a guy that's just starting to find your way. You speak about Jack Ginnivan. This young man's just realised about the caper of consistent week-in, week-out footy. Hence his numbers. He's had some superb games throughout the course of this year, which he played 16 games. I think it's a predictable pick by the Saints with so much upside for not a lot of investment just yet. What does this mean for Fremantle, Kingy? We've just yeah. seen two significant players come and leave your football club. It's a worry, isn't it? And going in a really important first phase of 2024 to lose some senior core players over the last two years, really. You've mentioned this uh, every night. You've been on the show. They've, they've, they've lost four players in two years that they can't afford to lose at this stage. So I guess that puts them back a little bit in terms of their, their rebuild, their regeneration of the list. And as we keep saying, rebuild coaches don't survive. So this really puts the coach under the hammer in the first six to eight weeks next year. My only concern with the St Kilda model is that this is another addition that's not a frontline star, mm. that's not a match winner. So where are they coming from? Where are they building their list in terms of getting the, the, the one guy at the front that's, that leads the way, the torchbearer for your rebuild? Who is that? Is it Filippo? I, I don't well, know. But I think gee. the first piece with that is they're hard to get in, mm. like A graders. And if you don't consider a lot of St Kilda's players top end, I think Sinclair and Cal Wilkie clearly have had superb seasons for the second year in a row. But they're so hard to get in. In That's the midfield, we're... though. They, I mean, Sinclair finished the year in the midfield and we'll probably start back. there What I'm saying year, is but... they went so hard for Dugowie last year, but they are so rare to get genuine superstars into but, your uh, football That's club. my point. So, so one way to get them in is to get to the pointy end of the draft, to yep. get to picks one, two, three, four, five. What, how are they not challenging well, I think to get into you there? Well, look at Philippou, you look at Mitch Owens, Marcus Wynn, Hager and Wanganee Malira. So there's four highly talented kids, I reckon, that they're going to invest heavily. They did really well in this year's Best and Fairest for the Saints, so they are showing signs. It's going to take a little bit more time. 